What's up, nerds? So, if you're anything like me, you find it kind of hard to uh, focus on everything in school just because there's so much going on, and a lot of people have like side hustles and things like that, so they really need to stay organized. And that's what I've been doing. So I'm gonna go through five different softwares that I use. Now, if you subscribe to me for a little bit more conceptual tech videos, I actually have a video coming out soon about how UI developers like trick you into using their apps and things like that. But if you're interested in like practical advice and videos like that, this is the video for you. So keep watching, I'll show you how I organize my life as a student. So I don't wanna waste any of your time, so I'm gonna hop straight into my first app, which is Obsidian. Now, if you've looked up any like note-taking apps and things like that, you might have heard of Obsidian, but it's super, super powerful, but there is a little bit of a learning curve with it. So I'm just gonna go over some of the surface level stuff that Obsidian can do. So when we go straight into Obsidian right here, you'll see it'll load me into my notes. So what's really nice about Obsidian is I can do several different things with my notes. I can actually bring them and I can organize them in all different types of ways. So if I wanna have a middle note, you could do that as well. It's perfect for a use case like this where I have to take something like a bunch of notes and write a little release about that. So it is nice that I can actually have those split screen like that and I can pull away this and have a really focused view Super nice for writing essays and things like that. And you can keep it super organized right here. I haven't even gotten to the best part of Obsidian, which is that it's open source and people develop their own versions of it. So if I go up here and go to settings and then down to appearance, I can see that I have these themes. So I can switch the way it looks almost entirely. So if I like a little bit of Notion, I can go to Obsidian Notion. And right here, it has a more Notion look to it. So right here, all my notes are basically like Notion style. And then past that, I could actually write everything in Markdown, which is a programming language that Obsidian uses to store all your notes. Everything's stored locally, unlike Notion. So if I go here and I type three different hashtags, it's gonna be a title, so this will be title one. And if I go down here, I could do uh, two hashtags and then make title two, which will be a little bit larger. And if I do one hashtag, it's obviously just gonna be a bigger title. So that part's super nice. I can bold text, but when I bold text, actually puts it like this. So another pro of actually having this is that when I use ChatGPT and things like that, it actually outputs everything in Markdown automatically. That's just the language that it uses to make things bold and stuff. So a great use case for this is I can head over to my ChatGPT right here. So it's gonna make that table and you see how it did that line thing right there. So once I do that, I can actually just copy all of this and it should just paste straight into I didn't expect it to make so many, but once it goes down here, I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna bring that straight into Obsidian over here. Let's make a new note. And if I wanna just get rid of these, it'll make it a single view and I can hit create new note. There you go. So you see the table just pasted straight in here. So it's super nice because if I go to something like the notes app, for example, the table's gonna paste like this. It's nice that in Obsidian, it's able to actually interpret all of that code. And so that means that when I'm typing notes and stuff, I'm not, I don't have to have a bunch of different like bold like buttons and stuff around the actual editor because it's just built in. It's the way that I type. So you can look up Markdown like uh, cheat sheets or like videos on how to use Markdown, but it's a very powerful language, especially for note taking because I don't have to switch between moving my mouse and moving my keyboard. I can just straight up type whatever note I'm trying to do, which makes it super fast and super speedy. I, lastly, the best part about Obsidian is I can go up to settings again. I'm gonna switch that back because I do not like this theme that much. And I can hit browse right here. And these are all those plugins that I was talking about. So you can make more than just themes. You can have all kinds of plugins, whatever you really want. Um, they have different boards. You can make calendars. You can have all different kinds of things. One that I've used in the past is enhanced export, which lets you export in different formats other than PDF. It's just super nice and it gives you a lot of customizable options right there. And so the one thing about it is even if you don't like programming and stuff, it seems like it would be for programmers and stuff, but it actually is not. It can be used by basically anyone. It's just a really nice productivity system. And I actually prefer over Notion now, although Notion does have a few pros over using Obsidian. But just for general note taking and stuff like that, this is a great app. They have a mobile version, it'll sync all your notes, but all your notes are also stored locally on your computer, which just makes it a great all around app to store your notes. So now let's get into Notion and let's get into some of the pros that Notion actually has. So Notion is a lot better for organizing things like databases. So databases are basically the only thing I use in Notion now, which means that if I go to my main calendar here, I have this calendar built up right here and you see how it says open calendar, that's gonna be a little bit of foreshadowing for later. But if I go hit plus right here, it's gonna create an event right here, but that event is stored in a database of items. So I can actually sort things based off databases and within these pages, I can hit slash and create a new page, which is really impressive because that means that, let's say for example, I have a video I'm recording on this day. So we're gonna call this initial one, we go back to calendar. So this new page right here, I'm gonna call this video one right here. And I can 
pick a class that is for, but let's just say it's for my YouTube and I can add what part of the process I'm in. So I'm writing it for example. And right here I can actually have a script. And within that script, for example, I can go down here and have a page. And so this page is just gonna be another page within the page within the page. But you can really go down the line and have as many of these as you want. And I know that this kind of sounds impractical, but it's really nice when you're designing things like my homepage here. I have all of my sub pages right here of things that I need to do. I have my main calendar, I can have upcoming events, I can add to do items to this to do list and then you can embed things as well. So there's a million videos on Notion online, so I'm really not gonna cover it super in depth. This is more so to get it on your radar if you haven't heard of it, which I'd be surprised if you hadn't. But this is really kind of the ultimate to tool if like you feel like Obsidian is a little bit too advanced for you, Notion's definitely the way to go for you to organize all your notes. But do keep in mind, everything is stored in a cloud, which doesn't sound like that much of a downfall, but it is kind of annoying because sometimes pages won't load. If you don't have internet, it's kind of hard to look at your notes and stuff, which is important if you need your notes, especially on your laptop. But let's get into my next app, which also is Notion, but it's a little app that Notion bought and then basically created their own, but it's the same app as it was before. And that was called Cron, but now it's called Notion Calendar. So Notion Calendar is the only calendar I use just because it is able to store everything perfectly. It does look very bare bones, but that is what's so nice about it. I've used apps that have like to-do lists built in and they have like tons of stuff that they try to jam in the app, but I really just like having a simple view for my calendar. So here's my calendar. Um, and so if I wanna create an event, this drag feature is really nice. I know that Apple Calendar also has this, but I could drag to create an event. So this is gonna be event two. And if I wanna do anything within it or, and this is the kicker, uh, I could go to docs right here and I can add things from my Notion page, which is super nice. So if I want it to link to my Notion page, I can add them straight here. It's gonna take me right into Notion when I click that, and it's gonna take me on homepage. So that's nice if you have like homework assignments and stuff and you keep track of them in Notion. I don't really do that too much except for when I'm doing like filming and video recording. Then I have that kind of stuff in there. But I'll just show you like, this is what a packed week of mine looks like. And it's nice that I'm able to lay everything out right here, even though it looks like a lot is going on. It's nice I can color code it. I can have everything built in and it actually takes things from my Notion database and puts them on the calendar if they have times, which is actually really nice because I do all my YouTube videos through Notion, but then I have everything else stored uh, on this calendar. So like my classes and like all the other kind of things that I do. Um, so it's just a nice overall app and this is really the way I stay organized. I use this and then I also have a paper planner because I really do like writing things down. And I know it seems kind of redundant to have that paper element to it and then go back and put it in, but I'm telling you, uh, it's pretty much the best productivity system just because I like know for sure that I know the events there and no matter what, like even if I don't have my laptop on me, I can open up the piece of paper and start jotting down whatever event I need to go to. Next up is my to-do list app. So everyone has their own and everyone says theirs is the best, but I'm gonna say Sorted 3 is the best because Sorted is just super nice. It's a really simple layout, but when you click on these items right here, um, I can move them down for time and stuff. If I swipe up and down on the side right here, I can change the time of these events. So if they're all at the same time, if I wanna space them out, I can click uh, right here. I can space that one out right there. So it's just a super nice app. They have lists and stuff. So I mean, obviously I'm like my Costco list, for example. So things that I buy at Costco, I have on here. And if I go back, I can have my inbox. I don't really ever use this view. I only really use the schedule view, but it's nice that it'll just keep kicking over um, events to the next day, which I know a lot of to-do lists do. And it's really important to make sure that you're not like making sure they're all on there, but it's nice. I haven't really seen other to-do lists that let you delete tasks this easily. So if I hold down on this, it's gonna just delete that task, but it's not technically completed. But so like, for example, right now I'm filming YouTube video, I'll click this one off. Um, so it's just nice that you can do things like that. Um, it's just a simple layout, really nice phone app. It's just all together. There's a great to-do list app, but I do understand everyone has their own. And if you like your system, why change it? You know, just do whatever you, uh, you really want to do. So next up is my emailing app. It's email by Edison. Um, the only reason why I think this is a pro is first of all, the design layout is super nice, but second of all, uh, the other tab is great. So it's able to actually sort through important emails and other emails. And I've never missed an important email in like the five plus years I've been using this app. It's really great at sorting those. And you can also pin emails to the top. And then on top of that, if I want to go down, they do have things for bills and receipts. So I can pull up receipts right here. 
Um, they have travel things, subscriptions right here. So this lets me unsubscribe from emails super easily. It's just a super nice all around app. And I really love the layout of it. There's not really too many complexities to it. It's just a nice overall app. And last but not least is Arc. So Arc is a web browser. I've made a billion videos about this uh, browser. It's super great, great company. I'm not really gonna go too in depth with it. I'm just gonna say simply that you could switch between your uh, views right here. So each one has its own tabs. And then we have right here, we're gonna have like our folders and stuff to store things. And you also have different profiles. So if I'm in my school profile right here, my school profile is gonna show like only, it's only gonna show the pin tabs for my school and all my accounts are only gonna be logged in my school. But when I swipe over, this is gonna be all logged into my personal account. Uh, really nice design. It doesn't really get in the way, but it still looks super good. It really looks like Apple designed it and you can also customize spaces and customize web pages. So uh, another cool thing is like I can create a boost and change the color of this web page. But the great part is I can zap elements. So if I wanted to zap this, boom, gone. You know, I can zap this whole top bar and it all looks great. Uh, if you're new to this channel, I do videos every other week about some of the productivity systems I use and things like that, like tech that I personally use. I do videos more conceptual about like how UI elements impact you and like just more conceptual tech videos. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Um, see you. Thank you.